You're still watching Media Live. We go to one of our headline stories. And after a nationwide consultation on the winner takes all policy, the advisory committee of the policy think tank, the Institute of Economic Affairs, IEA, has recommended an increase in the number of parliamentary seats from 275 to 400. This, according to the committee, will help create an opportunity to bring on board knowledgeable technical experts, marginalized groups, as well as women to help us contribute more meaningfully to development. And I do have no short on the line. He is a member of the advisory committee. Good afternoon and thanks for your time. Good afternoon. Now, according to what I have here, this is a nationwide consultation that was done. But one concern is that why now and don't we have enough representation in parliament? Don't we have enough what? Representation in Parliament. Well, I don't know what you're referring to. If you are referring to a publication that someone proposed that we should increase the number of seats in Parliament to 400, mm. I must state quite ca categorically that that is not a recommendation by the IEA or mm. by the IEA Advisory Committee. It was a proposal that was made by just one single individual which we put out for public consumption and debate. And the idea that that proposal contains was that um, there's the need to, you know, increase the number of seats in Parliament to accommodate um, technocrats and people with certain expertise who are not interested in fighting for, you know, to campaign mm. for, um, for parliamentary seats, but mm. uh, want to put their expertise and skills um, available to Parliament and also to cater for marginali marginalized groups like women mm -hmm. and the disabled. So that was the idea behind the proposal. And the proposal was that the number of seats in Parliament would be capped at 400 maximum. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be any more increases. Mm -hmm. And if there is a census and there has been population migration, then the constituencies will be re-demarcated, but no new districts or constituencies will be created. And of course, we express concerns about our the proposal because of the cost implications. Mm. So it, it must be made clear that this is not a recommendation of the IE or mm. its advisory committee. Now, you, you, you have made that point clear that it was a proposal and you have raised a, some number of concerns. But I, as part of the concerns that were raised, I would want to find out from you, do you think that this is really feasible or workable? Well, I mean, I, um, I don't want to express an, a personal opinion on that, but what I'm saying is that um, the majority of uh, committee members at the moment do not have not really give their given their blessing to this uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you see, um, we are coming to the close of our con consultation, mm -hmm. and within a week or two, we're going to compile our report, which will synthesize all the the uh, recommendations and proposals that we have gathered from the various institutions and individuals that we have spoken to. Uh, some recommendations have gained widespread, you know, support and okay. approval. Um, for example, that the president should no longer appoint district chief executives mm. and that district assembly mem members should be chosen by, by election. You know, the president should not appoint one-third members of the district assemblies so that um, it should be based on the same way as the national elections uh, are based. And also, for example, that um, there is consensus that we should have a national development plan that should be binding on you know, successive governments. So this was um, a recommendation that was rejected okay. by the white government white paper. Okay. And so we'll be coming out with our final report, which should encompass all 